Welcome everyone and I think my voice is just about okay now. In this video I wanted to talk about how you can perhaps maximise your time a little better and be more efficient in your wildlife photography. I do sometimes get asked how do I decide what to photograph so on any given day how do I decide what I'm going to go out and shoot now these days I'm not out in the field as much as I used to be uh, more time making videos editing planning lots of other things but when I am going to go out and photograph nature then for me I'm largely basing that what I decide to do I'm largely basing that around the lighting conditions rather than just concentrating on a species so for example if it was um, if I was wanting to photograph birds in flight then I'd probably be trying to use those sunny days uh, bright sun and blue skies because I know I'm going to get faster shutter speeds and also I'm going to have uh, a better backdrop with the blue sky um, also for example let's say I was photographing a bird in a bush and I've got to be looking upwards towards the sky that's a similar situation where I'd be wanting uh, clear conditions and a blue sky because I want to use that backdrop for some nice colour rather than uh, quite a blank white sky alternatively uh, there might be situations where it's better to photograph in overcast light so maybe if you're photographing um, a black and white bird such as a magpie then that's very contrasty it can be difficult to get the exposure to look right in sunny conditions and the same could be true to some extent for pure white birds as well uh, if you're photographing in a woodland then that can be really really difficult with bright sun you can get tons of contrast lots of shadows so if you're photographing if the plan is to photograph in a woodland situation then it might be better simply to wait for those overcast days to do that and another tip as well this is something I do myself I've done for a, a while now because I decided it made sense um, if I am photographing in sunny conditions and let's say I've got a group of birds and I've got one bird that's pure white or it's got a lot a lot of white in it then I'll actually try and make an order of what I photograph first so for example if it was a sunny morning then I would try and photograph the white birds first the reason being that the sun is lower uh, it's not quite as extreme not as harsh a little easier to expose so I try and photograph that first and then as the sun got brighter I'd move on to photographing uh, what I'd call the more neutral looking birds so I think if you do it that way round I think that kind of makes sense to try as well to think about really maximizing the best conditions um, so the best conditions for you might not necessarily be what they are for me um, but whatever you think are the best conditions for the subjects that you're planning to photograph just try and maximize that and think this is this is the really the situation where you want to get those photographs and then what we could call the poorer conditions you can use that more for other things such as research uh, scouting new locations and maybe checking backgrounds and things like that now an example is when I used to do a lot of landscape photography so early in the morning and late afternoon evening particularly in the summer those would be my prime uh, conditions when it was sunny for photographing landscapes and then I tend to use the middle of the day which was very very bright sun which for me was poorer conditions um, I'd use that time of the day to scout new locations and find viewpoints so for the best conditions try and keep that you know for the best photography and then you, other times you can use for research also be realistic about when you can shoot uh, so there may be certain locations where it's just not very good at the weekend it's just simply too busy at the weekend and you might have the perfect conditions coming up for what you want to do but it's just too busy and it's just not worth the hassle it's just not worth trying in that case it might be better that you just always stick to weekdays for those locations obviously if you work during the week that can be difficult uh, maybe you can use your holidays and visit through the week try and make the most of windows so throughout the year you're going to get certain times where you get these opportunities in terms of wildlife photography uh, for example maybe it's birds pairing up in the spring singing or displaying uh, maybe it's uh, young mammals such as fox cubs that are very curious and don't have much fear where they first come out or maybe for example it's actually something to do with the habitat maybe it's the background maybe you've got some amazing background color that you want to take advantage of and that's not going to last for too long so all these things can be relatively short windows so it might be better even if you've got other things planned it might be better to kind of put them on the back burner and just concentrate on these opportunities whilst they're there
Now I think personally uh, one of the best ways you can maximise your time in wildlife photography is with the weather conditions. So certain weather conditions can be absolutely perfect for a subject, others can just be pretty much awful. Now we did touch upon this a little bit earlier uh, with lighting, uh, but there's so many different types of weather conditions out there as well. Now the first I'm going to mention is wind and this is something we have loads of wind lately in the UK and obviously in other countries being pretty horrendous and wind for me can be a real real pain it's my least favorite weather conditions uh, when it's windy now for example if I was wanting to spend a bit of time photographing insects if it was very very windy then I probably wouldn't really even bother unless I absolutely had to uh, I wouldn't want the battle of trying to wait for everything to stay still and having to push shutter speeds and ISOs and that kind of thing. So in that situation, I'd be waiting for much calmer conditions. Uh, the similar can be said with small birds. Small birds and strong winds don't tend to go together too well. Uh, the winds can often buffet the birds. They can end up with ruffled feathers. They can be more nervous, I find, and they can just, it can just lead to more awkward poses. Um, and definitely anything to do with water so if I'm going to be photographing birds on the water, or water's part of the scene, then I almost always want to wait for calmer conditions. So again, I'll be trying to maximise my time by trying to use those calmer days specifically uh, to photograph anything with water. And that could include uh, ducks and geese, or maybe it could even include birds that were drinking or not bathing because they'd be splashing everywhere, but birds that were drinking from water as well. However, really windy conditions might actually help photographing birds in flight. Uh, so if you've got a bird that's flying into a strong headwind, then that can slow it down, can make things easier. Uh, this is something I've talked about in other videos, and you also want to take into account the wind direction here as well. So on days where it is very windy, that might be an option, again, to try and maximise your time. Think as well about mammals in terms of wind. Uh, some mammals will smell you coming, very good with their sense of smell. Is it better? to have stiller conditions or maybe it can work in your favour if you've got a wind that's coming towards you. Uh, what about the rain? Uh, how can you maximise your time in those conditions? Well again if you're wanting to photograph let's say dragonflies and butterflies and you go out in heavy rain then you probably it's probably not going to happen you're probably just wasting your time there. Um, however uh, if you photograph water birds, for example, is that going to make any difference in the rain? Not really. Water birds aren't going to be bothered by that at all. In fact, I could argue that you're going to get better images with raindrops. Um, even think of a kingfisher, for example. That's kind of a water bird. Uh, you know, the kingfisher uh, isn't going to be phased by too much rain. I've seen them out in incredibly heavy rain and surprisingly hardy birds. So have a think about, again, what's the best subject for those conditions. Maybe you have something that you just think looks particularly good in the rain, some bird or animal that you just think looks fantastic in the rain and those are the conditions you want to shoot it in, then try and do that. Also think about yourself and your camera. Can you make use of any shelter uh, when it's raining? Let's say, for example, you're on a nature reserve and you've got a mixed forecast with some rain in there. Maybe you could take advantage of a hide and do your photography in the rain in there, uh, in, in nice and dry and warm. And then when it clears up, you can be outside uh, shooting out and about. And from rain to floods, see what I did there, nice, nice transition. Uh, we have had a lot of local floods here recently and some high water levels. And for time to time, you might get this happen, some flooding, and it might bring new opportunities for wildlife photography, or indeed it might take them away. Now what I'd say here is, if you have a very reliable site for photographing wildlife and you do get flooding in the area, then if it's somewhere you know that might well become inaccessible, it might just be better that you don't even try and access those places because uh, it might not be the best use of your time. So you may be better to look for new areas that have suddenly become flooded and this is something I've seen myself on a few occasions, is places that are usually completely dry, such as dry fields, for example, and now they become, you know, small ponds or even lakes. And then that can attract various water birds, your ducks and geese and swans and things. So again, it's about trying to maximise uh, here, maximise any changes and just try and make the most of that. 
and from flooding to freezing. Uh, so here this can bring new opportunities again for certain types of pitches. Uh, myself personally, if I get very cold temperatures below freezing, um, then there's a good chance I'll head to the local park and the lake will be frozen over and I'll try and get some pictures of ducks, uh, trying to get them slipping and falling on the ice. So again, this could be quite a small window. It's an opportunity created by the weather. It won't last very long, so it might be better to put other things on hold and maximize your time and concentrate on that. So obviously I do realize that a lot of people will work during the week and it's not as, as simple as just going and photographing what you want, when you want, because the conditions are perfect. Uh, but if you are able to do that on occasion and if the key for you is to try and maximize your time and be as efficient as possible, then I would say definitely try and tailor the weather conditions particularly towards the subject. Uh, also try and take advantage of those small windows of opportunity which don't last very long and also consider using the poorer conditions, what we call bad weather, uh, more for research, checking things out, and then when the, when the conditions are perfect, you can go back and hopefully get the best pictures from that place. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed, please do so, and I will see you sometime near a flooded lake sometime soon.